What is going on everybody? So today we are gonna be covering army movement techniques. This is gonna be like the last video that is essentially not gonna be going over the different battle drills, right? So this is, you know, the last one that y'all have to endure, but I'm going to cover this because you guys need to know this stuff, especially the bounding portion, which I will have at the end of the video because uh, it's, it just, it just flows better that way. All right, so if you watched the first video that I made, then you know that this is called a squad column and these individual little dots right here is just a fire team wedge. So this is a squad column fire team wedge, right? So we just kind of covered the position or the, the movement formation in general uh, in the first video. And then in this video, we're gonna be covering the technique. So how are these people actually moving? to the objective or just where they're supposed to be moving on their patrol and, and all that good stuff. So there's three different movement techniques that we're gonna be covering. We're gonna be covering traveling, right? We're gonna be covering traveling overwatch, and then we're gonna be covering bounding overwatch. Now, when I cover the bounding overwatch, I'm gonna cover a little bit more in depth stuff. So make sure you're paying attention to that because then I'm gonna actually cover just the process of bounding and what you need to do, which is, you know, really important. It's a really important movement technique. All right, so the first movement technique, traveling. So this 10 to 20 right here. So what does that actually mean? So the 10 is 10 meters, and that's 10 meters space between each individual soldier. And then the 20 is the spacing in between each squad. So this would be, for example, first squad you would have 10 meters separating each individual soldier and then you would have 20 meters separating down here behind uh behind the first squad position would be 20 meters separating the second squad 20 meters separating the third squad and so on and so on and so on now when do you want to use this movement technique you want to use this movement technique because you are fairly close together you want to use it when contact is unlikely so if you're not really expecting to receive any contact when you're on this movement then you want to use traveling and or you want to use this formation or movement technique whenever speed is super important kind of because you're kind of so close together because you got a little bit more control because you have a lot better maybe communication because you can just kind of easily talk to one another your speed in which you're going to be traveling is going to be much faster than the other movement uh, techniques that we're going to be covering. All right, now the next one, traveling overwatch. So this one, just going to go ahead and point out right out the gate, it's the same kind of principle here, spacing between each individual soldier, spacing in between each squad within the platoon. And I want to go ahead and you know let you guys know that in training situations, 50 meters is probably gonna be a little bit too far for people, you know, at basic training or at basic camp or even at advanced camp. So the spacing is gonna be a little bit closer to this if you're using traveling overwatch, which traveling overwatch is gonna be the most used movement tank technique that you're gonna be uh, doing. Traveling overwatch. So when do you wanna use this? You wanna use this when contact is possible. Right? but it's not super likely but it is possible and so that's why i said like when you're in a training situation a lot of times you're going to be taking contact whenever you're on a movement so you want to be moving in this traveling overwatch technique with this spacing or at least as close to this as you can get so now those two simple things are out of the way now we are going to go over the bounding overwatch and then talk more about bounding Okay, so bounding overwatch. Obviously, like I said, you're gonna be using bounding overwatch whenever contact is likely. So you are expecting to receive contact. Maybe you're doing an actual uh, movement to contact battle drill, right? Uh, you could be potentially using this whole bounding overwatch. Now, the distance between soldiers, as I've indicated here, is 20 meters in between the soldiers, and then in between the squads or the teams, it kind of depends on the size of the element that you are uh, training in. So more than likely you might be doing this just like with like a squad um in those you know beginnings of basic training and initial training in, in the army so the the spacing or the the size of the element that you're going to be doing this with is going to be variable and also the distance between is going to be variable now why is the distance a variable well this movement formation right here isn't really what it's going to be looking like whenever you are actually moving in traveling and in traveling overwatch 
this is what it's gonna look like, except you're just gonna be either close together or farther apart, depending on whether it's traveling or traveling overwatch. If you are bounding, you can't bound like this, like right behind each other. So basically, uh, just to cover briefly what bounding is, and I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth in just a minute, but these two individuals, like, they're pretty much right in front of each other. So if this individual back here bounds forward, he's gonna end up being right across the path of this guy. So what's gonna happen, and I'm gonna show you guys in a minute, is you're gonna have to offset the teams or the squads. So if you are doing bounding Overwatch in a squad, then basically what you're gonna be doing, and this is probably gonna be what you're gonna be doing, is bounding in teams. So you got your alpha team up here and you have your Bravo team down here. Your squad leader should probably just stay with the alpha team, but that is just up to him. It is the whole Met TC dependent if you go back to the last video. All right, so I separated basically the two teams and put them side by side of one another. So you have your alpha team with the squad leader on the left. You have your Bravo team on the right. Now. What is gonna happen with bounding? If you've never really thought about it before, essentially what you're gonna be doing is one team is going to move while the other team covers, right? So in this example, the alpha team is going to be the one that is going to move first. So essentially, you know, there's some things that you can kind of go more in depth on what the people should say or what the leader should say, what he should tell Bravo team at basic training you might do the whole buddy team live fire and you're gonna be bounding just as a couple, just two people. You're gonna be bounding one after the other. And then what the one individual is gonna say is, uh, he's gonna say, I got you covered. The other guy is going to move up. He's gonna to bound to his next position. He's going to yell set, meaning that he is set in his position. And then that gives the other team member or the other individual the all clear to basically move up to the next position. So the, the guy who is covering is gonna yell out, I got you covered. And then the next guy is gonna bound up, he's gonna yell set. Then the other guy is gonna yell moving and you're basically gonna be bounding up one after the other. Now, when you're doing this as a squad, you're gonna be bounding as teams. You don't wanna have this all be all crazy and have these two individuals bounding over here. You have these two individuals bounding over here and then it, it, you, you don't want it to be all crazy. So if you're bounding, and if you're in the bounding overwatch uh, army movement technique. So if you're using that, then your alpha team is gonna bound. They are going to then be set. Bravo team is gonna be uh, essentially laying down fire. Basic training, they're probably just gonna be yelling bang, 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 right? And then whenever alpha team is set and they're ready to, Bravo team is ready to move, Bravo team is then going to run up to the next position be set and then uh, basically cover alpha team when they decide to move. So you're gonna be alternating. Now there's actually two different bounding techniques that you can use. You can do successive bounding and you can do alternative bounding, right? So what is successive? I've basically drawn here successive bounding for you guys just kind of as default. And that is when you have basically, my black marker is almost gone, but you have basically both teams are gonna be in line. So what would happen here is alpha team would bound up to the top of the whiteboard here. And then Bravo team, because you're doing uh, successive bounding, they would also bound up to the top of the whiteboard and then get online. So you would have one team, one squad, whichever size element you're using for bounding Overwatch, they would bound up to a certain position. And then the next team or squad would bound up to be at least roughly in line with that other element that they're bounding with. Now, if you are doing alternative bounding, then it's going to be obviously alternating positions. So if let's just say, let me switch my marker here. So let's just say that the A dot here is alpha team. Let's say the B dot here is Bravo team. So we're doing a squad and bounding overwatch. So in alternative, alternate, alternative bounding, essentially, you would have your Bravo team bound upwards, kind of out to the side and kind of get right about here. The distance here is going to be, I don't know, let's just say roughly 50 meters. It's gonna be dependent on the terrain that you're in. I mean, this could be even as small as 10 meters or 
I mean, probably not five meters. I mean, if you're really taking some hard contact, you may not be able to actually make it that far. But let's just say it's 50 meters. You get up uh, and actually get to sprint for a little while. It kind of just depends on how much contact you're taking. If you are taking heavy contact at the moment and you just really can only bound up a little bit, then you're gonna abide by the, essentially the technique that says, I'm up, he sees me, I, I'm down. And what that means is you're laying in your prone position, returning fire, and when it's time for you to bound, you get up as fast as you can, you sprint, and he, the person sees you, the enemy sees you, they start firing at you, and you're down. So it's it's very quick. It's I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. And then the next person is gonna do that, or the next team is gonna do that. And you'll be doing that over and over again. That would be very tiring if you're receiving contact, just so you guys know. But if you're kind of doing it as a patrol technique, if you're just doing bounding overwatch, then you know you don't have to sprint like all, like everything is on the line for that actual uh, bound that you're doing. So it could be a little bit more, not lazy, but you're gonna jog essentially. So essentially Bravo team is gonna move up 50 meters. And then what'll happen since you're alternating, Alpha team is gonna move up right about here. And so that's gonna be about 50 meters ahead of Bravo team. And then what they're gonna be doing is they're gonna be alternating, alternating, alternating. So if it was successive, then Alpha team would have just moved up to right here. Bravo team moved up, Alpha team moved up, Bravo team moved up. But since you're alternating, which is what you're most likely gonna be doing, then you are alternating who is in the lead. So a couple of key points that I want to mention that I do think that you should watch, so don't click off the video if you've made it this far. So let's say you have a platoon doing bounding overwatch. It doesn't have to be the entire platoon doing bounding overwatch. You could just have the first squad doing bounding overwatch and then squad two, squad three, squad four, they're just in their platoon column and they're just doing traveling overwatch, right? or you could have the lead squad be doing traveling overwatch and then the rest of the squad could be in the traveling movement technique where they're a little bit closer together. And the reason for that is let's say you're doing a movement to contact, uh, most likely what could potentially happen is the lead squad, since they're doing bounding overwatch, they think contact is likely, they're gonna be the ones that are gonna receive and take the contact. So if you're, you know, 300 meters back and you're in the fourth squad, then it's, you know, it's not gonna be as big of a deal for you to be doing boundary overwatch because the rest of your people have already made it through that area and cleared it in a sense, right? Uh, but you should still be having right and left security and rear security and all that stuff. But that's just kind of something to keep in mind. You don't have the entire, you don't have to have the entire platoon doing bounding overwatch. So if you were the platoon leader and you wanted to be all high speed and do this at basic training or at basic camp and you said, hey, the first squad, I want alpha team and I want Bravo team. I want you guys to kind of bound up for the next couple hundred meters or so. And then the rest of us, we're just gonna be kind of following behind you in a squad column in the traveling overwatch movement technique. Now, as I've said before, this stuff that I'm gonna be covering, you're, I mean, I wasn't taught this stuff at basic training. We did this stuff at basic training, but I wasn't taught this stuff at basic training. I didn't really realize what we were doing when we were doing it. They just kind of, we just did all these battle drills. We just moved here, we moved here. We did this little wedge formation. We did a couple little rock drills and all that stuff. But I didn't really understand what it was that we were doing until I switched over to become an officer and you really go a whole lot more in depth on all the stuff that I'm gonna be teaching you, right? So I just want y'all to keep that in mind that if you do become a leader at basic training, this stuff's gonna be more important for you than if you're not a leader at basic training. And then also if you wanted to go like the whole ROTC route or if you want to become an officer, this stuff is gonna be uh, really important. You're gonna be having this drilled into your head over and over and over again. So now that we have covered bounding, right? This was kind of the most important one for this video. In the next videos, I can actually start getting into some of the battle drills that we're, we're gonna be doing. Now that I've covered Met TC, I can cover a little bit of the planning, essentially, like the, maybe the TLPs, the troop leading procedures that you may do. Again, those are things that you may not be taught at basic training, but you're gonna be doing them. You just 
don't know you're doing them. So if you know you're doing them, then you can be more on point with your decisions, you know what you're doing, be more practical in a sense with all the things that you're doing because you actually uh, know why you're making certain decisions. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. That would be awesome. If you're still some more of my videos, hit the subscribe button. That would be even better. Follow me on Instagram, Snapchat if you haven't already. Hope you guys have an amazing freaking day and I'll see y'all uh, later. Drop.